Football and soccer pick up big home wins. We'll tell you how they did it coming up on the Penguin Rundown. What's going on, Penguin Nation? I'm Mike Rustowski alongside John Chiraldi. John has seen another colorful Penguin oh, side. Like Tell one? us a little bit about it. It's slightly different than last time, if you notice. There's a lot less penguins. I mean, a lot more, but they're much smaller. They're tougher to see. They're tougher to see. I would ask for a one-shot so we could really give this tie justice, but I don't think our director, Corey, yeah. would give it to us. I don't, I don't think, think so. he really cares. Yeah. What about you, man? You're wearing West Virginia blue yeah, on a Yeah, it was, YSU it was a rough show? morning. The electricity went out, so I had to get dressed in the uh, dark closet. So, again? Yeah, again. So it's lucky I got a jacket and pants on, but I'm here and uh, ready hey, to go. Hey, you got pants on, man. That's, That's all right. that matters. Yeah, a lot going on on campus this past week with football, women's golf, and soccer all hosting home matches. John, let's start things off talking about Coach Boateng and the soccer team. After starting off the season with four straight road games, the YSU soccer team finally returned home this past weekend. Sunday, the Gwens hosted Longwood University at First National Bank Field. Let's take a look at the game. YSU entering the game at 1-2-1, one, and one, a record they are trying to improve in front of the home fans. We pick things up in the 16th minute. Christina Corbin finds the back of the net for Longwood University, giving her team advantage and her only goal on the day. Not long after that, in the 17th minute, Ernestina Ambambula gets the pass, dribbles to her left, and puts it in the back of the net to even things up at 1-1. One one. Now heading into halftime here, Coach Botang giving the troops a pep talk here, and whatever he said definitely paid off in the second half. All Gwyns from here on out. We pick things up in the 76th. Ambambula again, her second goal of the day, fourth of the year. Incredible game, and here, Ambambula with the pass to Madison Hughes in the 84th minute. This will be the Gwyn's third and final goal. Gwyn's win, 3-1. to one. Games in a row, what's it mean to come home and get a W? I mean, um, it's everything to us. You know, the pressure coming in as a new coach, looking at the results in the past, and um, the results on the road have not been perfect. So coming home for our first home game was a lot of pressure, but I think um, the girls responded very well. We had a tough schedule with our first uh, four or five games out on the road. So to be able to start our home opener here with a win, that um, actually it takes us to second place in the Horizon League right now. So that's really important for us because we want to be in the top four at the end of season. So it starts at positive momentum right now uh, from the get-go here at our field. We have good vibes and we have a uh, good chemistry going, so it feels good. Going into halftime at 1-1, what are you telling the troops in order to get ready for second half and come out striking? Um, I, I think um, it, it was simple for us because um, they were sitting deep and we had a lot of space going forward, but we were not recognizing it. So when we showed them in halftime that, hey, we need to communicate more, we need to find the spaces, we need to drop off and spin off, um, I think they understood it. And um, second half, that's exactly what they did. And um, the result was that two goals. We looked a lot better on Friday with our passing and connections and the simple things. So this first half, we were rough on that. Our first touch was off, our passes were off. It was all this, a lot of the simple things. Like people had the work right there, but it was the simple connection and just playing the, you know, just playing the sport. So that's what we were telling them at halftime. Just focus, breathe, play the game the way that we play it, and we're the better team. And sure enough, it showed. Ernie, two goals, four goals in five games. Talk about what she's brought to this team. You know, um, like I said, she's a special player. I had her in my former school. I've had her for two years. This is my third year with her. Um, she has tremendous um, technique. Um, she's com she's coming at you. You have to be you have to be scared. And if you're too tight, she's going to spin off of you. If you give her space, she's coming at you. So um, it, it's difficult for teams to deal with her. And from the touchline, we just could hear the coach yelling. Um, make sure number 10 doesn't get the ball, make sure that number 10 doesn't get the ball. But we have a lot of number 10s on the field. So if you take her out, now we have uh, other people um, taking that space. So um, she's going to help us um, moving forward. We just have to make sure she's healthy. Ernie's a very smart player. She sees the um, she sees when there's a shot and she sees when there's passes and stuff. She never loses her composure. She's one of those players that you can't rattle her. And uh, she's young. She's only 18, but she can take those hits. She can hold the ball at her feet, and she's not afraid to. And that's the biggest thing. She just knows the game and she loves soccer, so she's good at playing it because she's not afraid of the ball. She's not afraid of taking those hits and taking those shots. So we need a player like that who's fearless. And she's doing a really good job so far. I want to score every game, and my focus on this tournament is to win. Like best play, offensive player of the year and to score every game and our team hate losing so I don't want my team to lose so every game we, we want to win and score. What a start to the 2016 season for Ernestina and Bambula. 
The junior followed up her two-goal performance Sunday by being named the Horizon League Women's Soccer Offensive Player of the Week. Ernestina has four goals and four assists on the season and leads the Horizon League in points, points per game, goals, assists, and assists per game. Taking a look at the Penguins' schedule, YSU now sits at 2-2-1 two, two, and one on the season. Tomorrow, YSU will hit the road again as the Penguins travel to New York to take on St. Bonaventure University at 7 p.m. You can get live stats and updates on the game by visiting YSUsports.com. Then, Sunday, be sure to head down to Farmers National Bank Field as YSU hosts the Musketeers of Xavier at 1 p.m. Heading over to the Lynx, the women's golf team opened their fall schedule by hosting the YSU Kickoff Invitational this past weekend at Mill Creek Golf Course. The Gwyns took a first place lead in the clubhouse Monday as they carded a 3-0-1 for the first round. Tuesday, Indiana State carded an impressive 297 to rally and take the team title. The Penguin finished the day carding a 3-11 to post a total score of 6-12, earning second overall place. Freshman Reva Morris was the Gwyn's top finisher, according a two-round score of 150 and tying for fourth place individually. YSU will be back in action September 12th through the 13th when they travel to Batavia, Ohio to compete in the Northern Kentucky Invitational. The men's golf team will also be teeing off their fall schedule coming this coming Monday as they will travel to West Virginia to compete in the Joe Figanis Marshall Invitational. Last season, the Gwyn's finished fourth at the Horizon League Championships, its second-best team finish since 2012. YSU will have to replace three seniors who have played in 128 tournaments and 325 rounds of golf, one of them being Brandon Pluchinski, who was named the Horizon League Golfer of the Year last season. Best of luck to the men as they travel to Huntington, West Virginia. The Youngstown State Cross Country team began their season this past Saturday. Both the men and the women traveled to Pittsburgh to participate in the Duquesne Duels. Now, not everyone was in action for the Gwyns as a number of runners were held out of the meet. This according to head coach Brian Gorby. That didn't stop James Nedrick from having a day. The junior was the top finisher for the Gwyns, taking fourth in the 8K race with a time of 27 minutes, 6.4 seconds. For the women, Jennifer Mullenkamp was the top finisher. The sophomore finished 36th with a time of 20 minutes and 14.4 seconds. YSU hopes to bounce back tomorrow as they head to Firestone Park to compete in the Tommy Evans Invitational. Best of luck to James, Jennifer, and the entire team. Efficient offense and a stellar student section fueled the football team's 45-10 routing of Duquesne last Thursday. Big day for Ricky Davis and the Penguins offense. Let's take a look at the highlights. A beautiful night for football inside the Ice Castle. As you see right here, the Penguins won 21 straight home openers, trying to make it 22. We'll pick it up in the first quarter. The opening drive for quarterback Ricky Davis on third and six. He'll drop back in the pocket. He'll take it and go and get the first down and much more. Davis finished with 74 yards rushing on the night. Then, later in the drive, Davis stands in the pocket, takes a shot, but finds Darian Townsend down the middle of the field. Beautiful catch by Townsend as he walks in the end zone. His first touchdown of his career. Then, later in the second quarter, Davis leads the Penguins in the red zone again, this time handing off to Martin Ruiz, who takes it to the right side and finds a hole scampering into the end zone. His first touchdown of the season, he finished with 89 yards rushing. Then, right before halftime, Davis again in the pocket, finds Townsend down the middle. He's going to drag the defender all the way into the end zone. Townsend with his second touchdown of the night, he finished with 91 yards receiving and two touchdowns. Duquesne would answer, though, as right before halftime with 28 seconds left, Dylan B. Cool finds an Ahari Crawford on the back shoulder pass and a beautiful passing catch from Duquesne. Their only touchdown on the night as they make it 24-10 in the halftime. But all second half was all YSU. As you'll see right here, Trent Hosek hands it off to Tevin McCaster, the sophomore from Newcastle with a beautiful run, breaking about five tackles and taking it all the way inside the Penguins' five-yard line. McCaster finished with 107 yards rushing and one touchdown. A big night for the Gwens as they finished with 610 total yards of offense. They rule the Dukes 45 to 10. The Gwens will now travel to Morgantown to take on the Mountaineers of West Virginia. This will be the first time the two schools square off since 1938, a game the Mountaineers won 27 to 6. 
West Virginia enters the game 1-0 after beating Missouri 26-11 last weekend. It was a big day for Skylar Howard. Their senior quarterback was hampered by a rib injury, but still managed to go 20 of 35 for 253 yards. Now, head coach Dana Holgerson has confirmed Howard will start for the Mountaineers this Saturday. And stress this is not a game West Virginia plans to take lightly, citing the rich winning tradition of YSU and the defensive success of head coach Bo Pelini. Well, John, when you look at this matchup, what stands out to you about West Virginia? You just said it right there, Mike. Skyler Howard, he is the straw that stirs the drink and makes that West Virginia offense go. If you're the Gwyns, you want to shut him down as much as possible. Talked about a rib, rib injury for Howard. It's not really a break or a fracture. It's more of a strain and a misplacement of the ribs. He's been uncomfortable but all week, but Coach Holgerson said he's not been limited and he's expected to be ready to go Saturday. I think another big key for YSU is they're going to have to challenge West Virginia's defense. This is the team, a defense last week to Missouri, give up 462 yards of offense and let Missouri run 100 offensive plays. It's a lot of plays for a 60-minute game, so they're going to have to attack the West Virginia defense, make some big plays, or just have control the ball in time of possession. So that's going to be huge this Saturday. You touched on big plays, Mike. That is what the YSU defense is going to have to limit going against that explosive West Virginia offense, a team that likes to air it out. YSU number one last year in the FCS in terms of passing defense and 150 and 39 when they hold opposing offenses to under 170 yards passing. Rushing is going to be an emphasis for the Mountaineers. No problem for YSU if they can have a performance like last week. They held Duquesne to 34 yards rushing on just 21 carries. I think the biggest key this week for YSU is going to be handling the adversity. Last week, YSU only with one fumble loss. I don't even know if uh, Ricky Davis was sacked. He was hurried only a couple of times. No interceptions on the night for him. So it's going to be huge this Saturday. See how they handle adversity. We know how loud that place is going to be. West Virginia is a great atmosphere for a college football uh, game. So it's going to be huge to see if Bo Pelini can keep his troops under control. And I think if he does that, they're going to have a shot to win this game late in the fourth quarter. Mike, I think the chances for YSU to win this game are a lot higher than ESPN would like to put it. They have the odds for a 95% chance for West Virginia to win. I think this is a perfect matchup. We defend the, the pass well, something that West Virginia certainly likes to do. Also an emphasis this year on rushing the ball. If we can have a performance like last week against Duquesne, I think we're going to be in great shape. I'm picking the wins to win tomorrow or Saturday in Morgantown. I think this is lightning in a bottle. It is the perfect storm in a matchup that I expect YSU to win. They're going to need a lot of help. They're going to need some non-offensive touchdowns, and they're going to need a couple plays to go their way. But I believe the Penguins are going to win Saturday in Morgantown. We talk about ESPN analyst Joey Galloway. He actually picked one FBS team, or one FCS team, excuse me, to beat an FBS team. It's going to be the YSU beating uh, West Virginia. So an intriguing matchup for sure for the Gwens. Kickoff for the contest is set at Milan Pushkar Stadium for 2 p.m., and the game will be available on 570 WKBN, iHeartRadio, and Root Sports. The volleyball team traveled to North Carolina this past weekend to participate in the tussle in the triad. Friday, YSU battled an efficient Elon offense and dropped three of four sets at Alumni Gym. Gwens bounced back Saturday morning as Lori Van Beek and Aaliyah Hughes led Youngstown State to a 3-1 win over UNC Greensboro. The redshirt freshman set a school record for digs in a four-set match with 30, surpassing Lori Shives' 2009 record of 29. Big day for Van Beek as well. The senior led the Gwens with six blocks and tied her career high for kills with 18. Tough sledding for the Gwens later in the day as YSU lost in straight sets to high point. Senior setter Val Jeffrey, however, was named to the tussle in the triad all-tournament team. She averaged 8.55 assists per set this past weekend. Now taking a look at YSU's schedule, these three matches, a part of a 10-game road trip in the month of September, YSU now sits at 2-5 and five on the season, heading into this weekend's Akron Invitational. The Gwens will face Eastern Kentucky tomorrow at 7 p.m. Now it may only be September, but the softball team is already preparing for their spring season. The Gwens will begin their eight-game fall schedule tomorrow night at the YSU Softball Complex. Last season, the Gwens finished with a record of 30-21 and 21 overall and 15-7 and 7 in the Horizon League. The Gwens will be returning several key players, including Callie Mikovic, who hit 398 with 13 home runs and 49 RBIs last season. Paige Gian Angel will also be back as she led the Penguin pitching staff with a 4.17 ERA while finish, finishing with a 17-12 and 12 record. Six of the Penguins' eight games this fall will be held at the YSU softball field, and you can visit YSUsports.com for information on the team's fall schedule. First pitch against Akron is set for 4 p.m. tomorrow. Good luck to the softball team. Well, that about does it for us here on the Penguin Rundown for news. 
highlights, and more. Be sure to check out YSUsports.com. Be sure to follow us on Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, and Facebook at Penguin Rundown 1. I'm John Schiraldi. And I'm Mike Yerstowski. Thanks for tuning in, Penguin Nation.